the show. Welcome to the madhouse known as Bass and Bonsai. We are back in the house, not out on the water. We were out on the water over the weekend. Oh my, my, my. What a weekend. Have you guys seen the videos? The Poison Adrena is the best fishing rod ever made. Or is it? The Steez Limited SV Shallow Spool is definitely the best reel ever made. Or is it? 100% it is. That's why I bought another one. So we're going to unpackage it. We've got the two shallow spools now and over here hiding in the corner. Oh, look out. We've got the other one just because we wanted a slower gear ratio, right? Seven to one. The shallow spools only come uh, that way. So yeah, we covered the deals and I could always order gears. I know that. Then we got this turd over here, the little uh, HLC that I'm starting to like. Don't never have loved that reel. Not yet. Love these reels. So we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about how I managed to forget my day box. Never forget your day box. Oh, so anyway, those of you that have followed the channel from this year anyway, last year, from the get-go, and comment. If, if you're watching this video, I don't care when you're watching it, and you've watched Bass and Bonsai since the beginning, I don't think there's any of you left from the beginning, uh, comment below. But if you're new to the show, buckle up and hang on because it's going to get interesting. We went full bougie today, okay? I didn't even realize that the person I've been messaging off Tackle Tour lives within driving range to meet me at Bass Pro Shops and do some wheeling and dealing. So before we get to that, I'll talk about the wheeling and dealing. Uh, if you haven't checked out the video with uh, this combo, tearing them up, I want to say I tore them up yesterday, but I really didn't. I finally got on this little dude right here, got on a little bit of a bite for me, but there's always, every dog has his day. Charles had his day 100% yesterday. I left my day box and Charles flat tore me up on one little bait and I'll talk about it. We'll, I'll show you it. I've, we've talked about it before, but this bait was on fire yesterday and I could not catch up. Wasn't really because I didn't have my day box. It was just because I think my game was off from the get go. And then it was just, like I said, Charles's day. Uh, Awesome day for him. I still had a good day, but man, I was cold. When these fingers, I'm like Joe Montana when he's played for the Chiefs. Once his hands got cold, game over for the Chiefs, right? Kind of like me. Anyway, you guys remember Joe Montana, right? When he played for the Chiefs, and we went all the way until we hit cold weather, and that's what beat uh, the Chiefs. I'm still trying to make myself like this reel in general, and I love the Carbon Light 2.0 rod for the hookup rate. I've talked about this before. In hand, the Carbon Light 2.0s are not the best feeling rod you'll ever feel in your life. Out on the water fishing them, they cannot be beat. I've talked about that. But what I'm trying to find is both, right? I'm trying to find something that can hang right with the Carbon Lights on the hookup ratios for almost any bait you throw on them. They just have that ability to, like, they got the action that just keeps the fish on the, you know, bait that you're throwing. So, in the process, we've got a lot of different things. Uh, this reel, if you guys have watched any of it, the HLC, in my opinion, sucks right out of the box because of the spool. It's just too wild. I did the little spring switch. I basically took the regular spring. The boost one's still out there, and it does its boost thing, but the other one uh, I put on the inside, which is pushing out making it more like a fixed rotor with the boost capability. So it actually works very good now. And I'll talk more about that later. But the whole point of kind of this year is tracking down. I've kind of went away from, I'm still trying to bring you some bargains and stuff from AliExpress, myself stuff from Ali, you know, the, those rod reels, baits that just, they're cheap and affordable. Not necessarily cheap, but they work awesome. We're still on that little hunt, but we're also going for trying a bunch of different stuff, tracking down what does, doesn't work for me 100%, but I feel would work for you guys also on feel of rod reels and all that kind of stuff. And I know somebody's going to be like, get the feather light or get the feather, the Phoenix feather. That rod's still on my list, but I've spent too much money at the moment. I probably will get that rod, six foot nine, medium heavy. They, uh, I forget who you were. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. Commented, it only weighs 80 grams. So that rod is on my. It's actually in my tackle warehouse uh, cart deal. I just don't know when or where. Another couple weeks or who knows. I may click the button tomorrow and have it headed this way. But I'm trying to find 
I I think I, I think it's impossible for me to narrow it down to three rod and reel combos. I could go out and feel like I could fish every bait that I would want to fish. I don't fish real deep dive. I'm not a 10XD. I'm not an 8XD. I'll try the 5XD. I'm not a probably even a 6XD guy. I'll try some of the other deeper stuff. I'm not a Carolina rigged fan. I will, may try it, but I feel I can get down to three combos that can kind of handle a lot of that kind of stuff. If I find the right rods, I've already got the reel. The re Here's the reel. I already got three of them. So this one for any kind of cranking stuff, have it on the whatever rod I deemed for the deeper diving cranking, which I don't know if this rod we're getting ready to talk about is capable of handling that. So I may have to move it to four, but I think I can get it down to three. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to have to settle at five and I want to keep them under seven foot over six foot six. I a hundred percent, the Poison Adrena 6 foot 11 medium plus, it's there. It's going to be in there. It does a lot of different stuff. It basically leaves me leeway to get a rod and reel combo that can handle the high end and then the extreme low end, like the way I feel anyway. So, in order to work on the chatterbait and jig game and stuff like that, because the only thing I feel that the Carbon Light 2.0 is lacking is the sensitivity for bottom bouncing stuff. I think it's just a, it'll work. And it may actually just all be in my head because I may need that little bit of lack of sensitivity since I use braid to leader on everything. But I feel like I can find something better. So it's led me down the path of possibly, uh, Possibly even that Phoenix Feather, if it's a more sensitive rod, but is awesome for it. But it, the Phoenix Feather, I think, is a little lighter. And maybe this rod I'm getting ready to show you is also to where it won't handle high enough as I want to go. But I think it will. I'm pretty much in a... I'm not saying I won't throw, but I throw like three-quarter ounce spinner baits, but mainly half. Uh, mainly half ounce jigs, but I try to stay in a smaller jig hook. I don't want the big like five, six, seven aught monster hook. Anyway, I think this is going to work. So we're going to do the reel first since we've already unboxed two. And I know I'm in the middle of changing stuff. We've got bearings everywhere. So if you guys don't know about Tackle Tour, I was uh, on Tackle Tour talking to a guy that had, he listed a bunch of rods. He didn't even mention reels, but then I asked him, I go, well, do you have any other stuff since I'd be meeting him? He lives locally. And he said, well, I have the reel that I had on that rod. And it was this one. I'm like, oh my God, I'll buy it. So I got a good deal on this. And as you guys are getting ready to see, which hopefully I didn't miss anything, it is like new. Uh, I think he said he got it in October. And of course you guys know, nobody fishes in October or through a lot of the winter. So it's got, uh, it looks just as new as mine. This one's brand new. That one's actually got more little couple watermarks on it from fishing so yeah in hand it is as good as new I'd been eyeballing one on eBay but it uh, and you see the difference the shallow spool the handle and spool are the same color and then on this one they're the same color but they're black and the gear ratios we've talked about this before so I have another one I have three total you guys don't believe me there's two, and here comes number three, in case you think I'm doing like some kind of trick photography. So do I really love these uh, Steez Limited Reels? Are they really the SV Boost and the Hydro, Hyper Drive, Hydro Drive, Hyper Drive, legit for me? I just, they work. I just love everything about them. They're lightweight, feel very strong. We're done, we're done. Is this still my favorite? Like for you guys and all around for the money, you can't beat it because this guy, other than the, the heft, the little bit of heavier feel, I'll be honest, this guy feels just as good too. I mean, I wouldn't lie to you. If you're like, dude, I'm never spending that much money, you may be like, I'm never spending that much money for this guy. You can go on Digitaka right now, like 250 bucks. You're not really missing out unless you want a shallow spool. This shallow spool will go down lower than this reel that's cool just by a little on the upper end or overall line capacity uh then you're talking these guys are like dead even really 
this one I think is a touch freer. That's just how they do it. When they get to the upper end ones, they, they get a little freer. They figure, I guess, the guys that are buying them are a little more advanced. But you can't go wrong, I'm telling you guys right now. If you buy the that newest Zillion 1000, the Steez 1000, they fill... It's a matter of the lightweight magnesium frame of the Steez over uh, this. Honestly, I still feel this is a better reel than the Steez A's, 100%, in my opinion. I got this one. I bought the HLC, this one right here. I 100% think that, without a doubt, the best buy, bang for your buck, is 100% this. But I still think this is overall better reel than this one. It's a touch lighter. It, this one cannot go out and do well this one can HLC technically it's 36 millimeter but the Steez A the older Steez A the new Steez A uh, this is I would say definitely better than the older Steez A's just because it has the boost and the uh, hyperdrive but even the new one uh, it's going to be a little heavier than this and I don't think it'll do anything more and then if you guys are worried about overall you think the Steez A is going to be built tougher then you could also get this in the HD version if you had that issue and you're still talking cheaper but I'm telling you guys right now this is an awesome reel so I still I still have to say and I've already scratched the crap the, but the finish oh my god let me talk about it real quick I do have to bring it up some of you guys would be worried about the finish on this is subpar to any reel I would put the finish on this reel uh not as good as almost any other reel you could get. In some reels it just wears off. I still don't know about this. I have seen a couple on eBay that are scratched. You can scratch any paint job, right? But so this reel right here. Uh oh. I think he's already adjusted this like tighter than I would want it. The thing's like not spinning very free. So anyway, no drag clicker, but Old Charlie thought ahead. I planned on originally getting a Steez SVTW, not a limited. So when I ordered the drag clicker for this dude, which is on route from AliExpress, I ordered two. So I've got two drag clickers coming for the three reels. This thing already comes with one, just like the Steez A's. I just, I'm a moron, honestly. If I wish I could have just talked myself into the weight thing and not worried about getting these. But once I eyeballed those, and you know how I am. You guys know me. Once you get me on something, and then I'm going to talk about one more reel, and then we're going to the star, the star of the show. I want to talk real quick. Jay will be very interested. Uh, I think Charles is kind of like, oh, maybe I wish I should have thought of that. But if you guys have been following along, the whole Arise deal, because this is also an awesome reel. This is probably... The closest I've ever seen uh, Chinese manufacturer AliExpress reel come to a Steez. The Arise, right? No, it's way off. They're still way off. Don't get me wrong. They're nowhere near it. They're nowhere near the Zillion. They're nowhere near, you know, your higher end Daiwa, Shimano, in my opinion. Are they close, though? I feel this reel's right there. I feel this reel... Uh, and I think I've come close to fixing it, is just as good as, and I know if some of you guys are Luz or Abu Garcia, I think the new Abu, Gar Abu Garcias are funky. I do not like them. I would, if I had to fish Abu Garcia, I would go get the older Gen 1 or 2 Revos, and that's what I'd fish. Hands down. I know the newer ones are lighter and stuff, but they got that huge honking where this deal is like right here and sort of smooth. They stick, protrude way out on the new Abu Garcias, and they got some funk going on with them. But this is a good reel. The Arise reels are, so far, I haven't heard anybody talking about something failing on them. The issue I had was they're a little finicky. Well, I took it this one out yesterday, and I cast it for quite a while. We were in, like, 20-mile-an-hour winds. And now it may not happen when I go again. If you guys remember, I took on one side I was able to on mine, and I couldn't on the other side because it drug. I put those magnets just like we did on the Dark Wolf Alter, just did, like I did on the Lingual Variants. It, it held the magnets. It didn't, uh, didn't rub. And I went out and fished it yesterday in the wind. Now, I had to go up. The very first cast, I backlashed because I had this dial set straight up and down, and we're on number two in here. So I, I had it set halfway of what you can do with the magnetic braking. So then I took it from 
halfway basically and I turned I just cranked it to there and I haven't even tried to fine tune it from there I cranked it to there and started casting and I'll be honest I did not have after that I did not have one backlash even in the wind and I was showing Charles I go watch this like you guys know when you cast into the wind and you can watch the bait die off it uh, it's still in backlash I'm like that is wild Like even my ste any reel should be backlashing when you can watch the wind slow the bait down, but it's like the spool slowed down. And what I told Charles was like, you know what? I think because I spooled this, this is 20 pound braid, so it's a little bit thicker, and it does when you cast. Like you cast, you can watch the line; it, it pulls more line basically off the spool. Like you could put a two pound on here and make a hundred foot cast and it's not going to hardly take much line off so I think as that spool got smaller and it needed to turn more I think I just found a sweet spot I think if you'd have put fluorocarbon that thick on though it makes the spool heavier and it would have hurt it but I just this thing now I'll probably go out and jinx myself and it'll probably suck from here on out but I was very happy with the way this thing was casting in the wind and I Charles casted a like I don't know enough times to go oh god I think it's fixed like because he talked about how it 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 would cast and it would cast and if you cast it hard it would backlash so he was he cast it hard i don't know a couple different times and it's like yeah i think you fixed it because it was getting crazy distance like it wasn't it's not dialed up all the way it's a little bit but it's still on two and that's what uh lastly then we'll go on to the bougie stuff this is bougie out of aliexpress though 134 dollars i think and then i got the bfs one coming 168 or 70. They had them cheaper at a different store, but it had a lower rating than the store I bought mine from. That's why I went with the one that was a little more expensive. This one's a little beat up right at the moment. Charles is a little rougher on his uh, gear than I am. I think Charles tries to take care of his rods like I do, but when it comes to reels, I don't think Charles is, is as protective as I am. But anyway, this reel... And you guys know what I'm talking about if you play around with BFS or test casting I feel this reel has a like I the release point I found I was throwing it up the bait up in the air because I needed to hold on a little bit longer it doesn't uh, it, it's a it's at a freer setting break wise and is casting great than even what my the other reels I'm used to the Steez Limited the, the HLC and the, even the uh, back when I had the Bantam and stuff so Further testing, but so far, putting those magnets in, man. And what I'd recommend if you guys are like, well, I I should try that, like Jay, or any of you guys that have a dark wolf altar and you've already done that, if you don't, like, well, I don't have any more magnets. Just take one magnet out of that reel, stick it in there, and just see if one side or the other of yours could take it. Because here's what I'll talk about what I think it, they got wrong. If you guys look at that. I think the tolerances that that's like moves if this moves in here oh boy hang on so this rocks a little bit but then these also move inside of it and I think that's what's happening with mine anyway this this is the only one I've ever cast this is the only rise I've ever dealt with Jay's got separate ones that are actually left-handed I think and it may be just that quality control some of them may be fine some of them may have an issue i think just a when you have that much movement what was happening to me when i first initially was trying to test cast this reel putting it up against the zillion and the uh bantam you know we were doing that frog test thing i'd feel like get it close and i'd be like casting hard casting hard and then all of a sudden it just out of nowhere backlash and i so just by adding those, you know, taking away some of that play, the ability for it to, magnets aren't quite close enough for it to work like it was, you know, to be a consistent setting. I think I've, it, it's there. And on some reels, maybe it's there. And maybe you need to add them, don't add them. I don't know. But so far, so good on that. I just wanted to get that out there before I forget about it. Or in this video or other video or whatever. So, here's what I got. 
This calls for a celebration, and I need to wrap this up. I really need to go to the gym. I wanted to load up and go fishing, but man, it's going to be horrible this weekend. I'm going to try to get out tomorrow. I messaged Matt. He never messaged me, but I'm going to try to get out tomorrow if I get off work like I did today early. I had to uh, I had to run Vanessa to work, and I had to meet this guy and get stuff, so it put me behind. But if I get off work at tomorrow like I did today at like 2 o'clock, I may go ahead and have a few things rigged up and ready and just go somewhere fishing for a while tomorrow and then call that my weekend but this calls for a diet coke celebration no fireball but in a pinch put a little fireball in your diet coke and you got cinnamon coke just so you guys know let's talk about what i really went to pick up it wasn't even the steez limited until uh later this morning earlier I had messaged a guy and asked about other stuff, and he mentioned that limited. But this is what I went to look at and get. The uh, it's a P5 Super Destroyer F6 6.9X, quarter to one and a quarter ounce, 12 to 25 pound line. Now I'll be honest, I've you know looked at this, got it out, checked it out, uh, 5D graphite. I was not, and I'm still not, overly impressed with this rod. Like, in hand, I'll be honest, the Poison Adrenaline, when I was up at Rogers and first filling that rod, and it took me about a month to finally go up there and buy that rod, right? It was like the gateway rod to these bougie rods. When I first felt this Destroyer, Bass Pro Shop's parking lot, in case anybody's curious, I was not impressed. I'm trying to figure out how to unpackage this so you guys can see me pull it out, right? This rod feels good, but it almost feels too stiff in my hands to think that it's going to be good for like an all-around. But I've heard from several people that this rod makes for an excellent all-around on that like a little bit heavier end type stuff. And I'm not even sure what color you would call these guide uh, wraps. But I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be fine with the... Uh, it's got micro guides, but they're not quite ducket micro guides. But the rod is, uh, let's get it over here where you guys can see. Oh boy, let me turn it around. It's definitely like a light, crisp filling rod. But it's hard to explain the, it's kind of a grayish black matte black this part of the blank is all that is like super smooth right here where it says let me let it focus where it says super destroyer built by mega bass then it goes into what reminds me of the older Daiwa uh woven stuff so i'm guessing this Daiwa just uh did this woven like one direction if you guys can make that spot like the way it goes around and it's rough filling so evidently mega bass has five different like this is just the outer one and the other ones are in their different directions is how they got it i guess i'm not 100 percent sure but this rod better impress me i got a deal on it honestly i i don't have any more in this rod than i do the uh because i bought the poison adrenaline brand new now, if this rod snaps on me this year, I will be pissed. But it's a chance you take, right? It does look like, well, as you saw, that reel looks like new. This rod, it still looks like new. Like, I'm pretty sure I, I looked at it, and I'm looking at it now, and I don't see a scratch on it. It looks like a brand new rod. So probably if I break it, it'll be my moronic self breaking it. So I don't even have the... Three-year warning. I do still have the year warning on the Poison Adrena. But you guys know the deal. Everything, washers, dryers, everything breaks right after the warning. TV's got two-year warning. Two years and one month in, screen goes out. And this will not be the first Mega Bass rod, if it does break, that I've broke after buying them. I bought several used over the years, and I've managed to break probably half of them 
Zaldane 3D Dynamics. Uh, I'm going to put a reel on it, but this dry does not feel as good as the Poison Adrena as far as grippiness. So let's put the reel that he had on it on it and see what we let me get it over here. Let me get it over here. Let's put this on it and I'll give you my impressions on what I think of it. And we'll check the balance before I do any balancing. You guys know me, I'll probably balance it. Let me just check. Oh yes, tip heavy, it's tip heavy. They're all tip heavy. Every one you get has a little tip heaviness feel. Oh, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna do something real quick. I just need to I just need to know how much weight just so I could tell you guys too. The poison adrenaline, if you don't know, if you didn't watch the other video. I put one ounce on the back of the poison adrenaline and it's a perfectly balanced like it just kind of balances in your hand. So I'm gonna to try to see how much weight this thing would take. And it's pr honestly, it's probably about the same because, uh, like I commented, I already knew this thing weighs as much as the, oh shoot, as a Carbon Light 2.0, but it's got the weight differently placed. So to where the Carbon Light has a weight, you know, all throughout the rod, like the, the handle assembly is actually lighter than this rod, but the blank itself is heavier, is what gives it a more tip-heavy feel, and it requires you to add even more weight than uh, what this rod would to be balanced. So hang on, I'm trying to, oh my gosh. All I need is one ounce. Just to see if it's where the, uh, well, hang on. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get these two weights to get in there and down. So I can just check it. You know what? Actually. So yeah, I'll try to show you guys. I put one of those little caps on with exactly one ounce, and I'll try to show you guys what I'm talking about. When I talk about balanced, I want my rod and reel combo, so when I'm holding my fingers like I got them right here, I have three fingers underneath the, you know, on this side, the front side of the uh, trigger, and then one behind. So when I move the very front finger away from it, it's, it's almost like tip. It's like right there. It's like right on the thing. So then when I add that, it's if anything, it, it almost puts, it transfers a little weight more bias towards the back. So what you can do, it just, it just lets you, it makes a whole combo overall feel way lighter. And so you can cheat the system of your balance combo by getting the lightest reel possible, even if it's not this high, bougie, you know, Steez Limited. You could put an Acura on any rod how light those are because that Acura can throw like 15 I don't recommend going higher but like 15 pound line for a little more higher applications and so you can put on a little bit bigger rod not crazy big but you can you know get whatever you can get a lighter reel put on a rod and then counter the weight difference and put it on the very back because one ounce here Say you could magically take one ounce off your reel and put it at the very back of the rod, it makes a huge difference back there. You can add change out by butt caps or whatever. So all I did by putting this on the back with an ounce of weight 
it just lets it be more balanced. Do you have to have it? No, you don't have to have it. But so this rod actually takes way less. I want to say that the carbon lights take an ounce and a half or almost two before they feel balanced. So the weight that is already on this is further this way. The more a rod is built, and that's why they try to go with the lighter and smaller guides even further out to keep them weight. But this should have a little... So what we should have, even though this is 128 grams, the 2.0 is 120 grams, this should have a little overall better for bigger hook sets slightly than the carbon light because I feel it's a little bit softer and they're roughly the same length, right? So anyway, uh, until I get this rod out and actually start fishing it, I won't know. Like, did I waste my money? No. It's a Mega Bass P5 that should work fine. Will it work for exactly what I want it for? I don't know. I've heard that it's like, uh, if you guys, was it punch fishing and uh, a bin from the hookup tackle, talk highly about how it's a good versatile, uh, like, uh, definitely like dock skipping and all kinds of stuff like that. But anyway, we definitely have gone full bougie over uh, here on a couple different combos, right? And then we've gone full whatever on the other combo. We got still have AliExpress rods and reels and the Arise reel. I'm definitely liking at the moment. People are messaging me all over. Uh oh, Matt's messing me about shooting for tomorrow to go fishing. Well, hell yes! So, anyway, where was I? Alright, gonna go fishing tomorrow. Be looking forward to those videos. Let me show you guys. If you have any questions uh, about what I feel, and I will be comparing, even though they're a different action and, you know, different price point, uh, I'm gonna compare the Adrena to this. Destroyer. Now this year I'm done buying rods. Like I mentioned, I might get the feather, the Phoenix feather. I may get that rod to try. I know somebody's laughing going, you're not done buying them this year. This year, I think I'm done. I'm actually probably going to weed out a lot of the remaining rods I have other than the select few. But if I can get myself stuck on one line, like unless this Destroyer just super impresses me you'll probably see me like i've talked to brew tank about this because he's also got just picked up an x pride you'll probably see me either poison adrena or uh, a couple poison adrena x pride mix since they have the same real seat same overall feel one will have cork one won't just to be a little different but have that same overall feel but can the super destroyer destroyer talk me into sticking with uh you know including the you know, in some people's opinions, the highest bougie factored uh, rods on the market, you know, in the mix. The, I'm definitely like the NRX pluses that I've had the NRX and the pluses don't really enthuse me enough to even think about spending that much money. Uh, so this will probably be it. I was trying to think, I can't think of any other, I don't want to try the... Any of the other guys' higher ends, like the Fantasistas from Abu Garcia, the Ecstasies from Dobbins, especially the St. Croix. St. Croix are just too heavy. Uh, even, I don't care how good they worked for the crazy price, 600 some dollars for as heavy as they are, I'd just stick with carbon lights, probably. With the braid. So, I'm going to get this... Uh, I'm definitely taking he couldn't remember what size this is but i told him it don't matter i fish braid the leader i'm taking that line off uh probably just go ahead and stick with the 20 pound braid it'll hold just enough to get the job done uh i wish i had ordered those uh, carbon fiber i either gonna put those carbon fiber knobs on one of these or i'm gonna i might just go ahead and order a set of mega bass knobs the hyper cork knobs for the hyper cork reel to go on the mega bass rod but those carbon ones from aliexpress would look good too if i for the destroyer but i may just end up with sticking something like this on at the black ones for now where'd they go just because then i can swap any reel around any of the other rods or whatever and not worry about whatever right 
so enough rod and reel talk stay tuned uh comparing these uh to also our wizard rods which i can't say that i'm not impressed but i'm not overly impressed with those rods for 100 bucks from aliexpress they're definitely not a uh they're not a versatile rods but for what they are i think they're gonna be pretty good so far my favorite rod which used to be the filling is now not the filling it's the it's actually the one up from the filling because it's awesome for jerk baits, but it uh, you can throw smaller cranks. And this honestly may be end up being the rod that I just keep in that lower end. They may be the destroyer, and then the quick for the smaller end, and then the uh, poison adrenal right in the middle, and it'll cover everything I throw because this little dude right here can throw. Uh, I can throw Ned rigs, TRDs. I can throw the smallest 1.0 cranks. I could even throw Dr. Krankenstein on this rod. It's a little overkill, but I could do it. You know, shaky heads, TRDs, all that. It's a sensitive rod. It's way more sensitive than the carbon lights, in my opinion. I don't even need you, Kang Tetan. So, as I end on the rods, and we're going to talk about baits, I will talk about this one one more time. The Wizard, this, the 6 foot 10 medium heavy, has been fine, no issues. The six foot eight medium, even though I broke it and I repaired it, I've had it on, I think, two different trips now. I did a horrible cosmetic job, but man, you talk about no sign of it breaking. Like, it's uh, no creaking, no nothing. That thing, it's still, it, it's, I put a little load, I like I'm trying hard because I feel it's kind of like free. I just repaired it now and I'm just, uh, Seeing how much they can take. These wizards, as long as you unbox them and they don't snap right on you, they seem to be, you know, pretty good lightweight rods. I can't knock them. They, uh... You know what? Actually, this one probably would be. I think it's a little bit... You know, it's more geared for, like, your bottom stuff. But I may have to try it with chatterbaits just to give it its chance to see how the hookup ratio is with chatterbaits because I honestly feel it could it could make for a good chatterbait rod too this is not the 610 medium heavy the 6 foot 8 medium I think it would be good for chatterbaits I think it's soft enough that the uh, the 6 foot 10 medium heavy I think could do the Z-Man original chatterbait but that's it I wouldn't uh, possibly well, you can throw a chatterbait and hook catch fish on any rod. I 100%. Like, there's not a rod you can't throw them. But I'm saying overall, the best for me and what I like the feeling of, uh, either one of those rods would be okay. But I think these other rods I have here are way better options. And then I can throw possible cranks and all the other stuff. Anyway, stay tuned. I don't want to get all out of the rod and reel kick and talk about this because I was a moron. <sighs> this is my day box. Day box? Say hi. <laughs> anyway, picked that up at Bass Pro Shops. I was like, Matt, I don't need a bass boat. You know, I got a two-man fishing boat, bass boat basically, but I can have a day box too, right? You don't need no fancy high dollar bass boat to consider yourself being able to worthy of having a day box. So I made a day box up. You guys have seen it, man. That, look, that baby is loaded. That there honestly is like five times more tackle than I ever used to fish with when I first started fishing. First probably five years, eight years of fishing for bass. That's a lot. There's a lot of stuff stuffed in. I don't know how many different whatever. All these colors. These colors have been working. These colors have been on fire. This dude right here is flat tearing them up. This whole box was sitting on my dresser yesterday. I got up yesterday morning, loaded up, geared up, headed out. This box was still sitting on my dresser when I left yesterday morning. I get all the way down, it's about an hour and 20 minutes down to Charles' place or where we're fishing around down there. Charles, after I told him, I was like, you know, I said, if I was you, I'd be throwing that peanut butter and jelly uh, little crank you got because Charles... And I have to admit, I bought, I have one of each right here, as you guys can see. I bought one of each after watching Charles tear him up from the get-go the first time I saw him throw it. And Charles pulled one out and just went on a tear that I couldn't catch back up to him on it. Now, this isn't what they call these fire tail craws. Uh, 
They don't call it peanut butter and jelly, but man, I call that peanut butter and jelly. They call these jigs peanut butter and jelly. Dude, that's peanut butter and jelly. So, the little one, uh, I think Charles maybe, I don't know if he tried the big one or not. And these aren't uh, wiggle wart knockoffs. These are actually 100%, uh, I call them rock crawler knockoffs. They look just like the rock crawlers. But they, this color, now I have a bunch of other colors in my boxes I had yesterday and I tried those. And then actually at the end of the day, Charles, because he had more, I was like, yeah. And he offered it right off the bat. He goes, I got more in there. He finally gave me one of these, and what's funny is I was trying out his Cast King reel on the cash and rod, and I caught a fish on that with this bait. But then when I he gave me one and I put on mine, I don't think I managed to catch a fish. But that bite had kind of switched, and we got on the uh, I got on a little chatterbait bite with the chatterbait I rigged up because all my good I feel in my head chatterbait colors for the times and conditions right now are in here. So I rigged up the B Height Delight with the, but this color that we were trying. So I had this big dude. I was gonna try because where we're at, it does get as deep as like uh, the average deep spots are like 20 and 30 foot, and then there's some out in the middle that's 15. But like everywhere out in the middle is at least like uh, average is 12 to 30 foot. So I was gonna want to run this around the bottom just in case some were still out there. But then I had that dude. I taking time the night before i cut down the skirt this thing comes with crazy long skirts that are as long as what a baby rage menace is so i'm just going to throw some different peanut butter and jelly at them i have uh i've taken the spare peanut butter and jelly jig that's a croco gator luckily i did have and i don't know why i couldn't get it to work I did have on still on my rod the peanut butter and jelly jig like this, but that sucker I could not get to uh, fire right. But I was going to try some multiple things. But the most important thing that I feel, if I'd have had it, Charles, you'd have been smoked. Well, there's two of them. If I'd have had this dude, Edo 110 Junior Plus One. And then this dude, my homemade peanut butter and jelly chatterbait, I think Charles's game would have been over. But they were up here in my day box. And then, oh, and don't forget this dude. This dude, I tore him up the day before. So what I worked with right off the bat, I did have my bluegill colored Z-Man spinnerbait. Wasn't doing nothing. And then I had the other jig, the Croco Gator jig. Wasn't, seemed to be working. I finally, oh, uh, I caught a couple on a few different things. But the main thing that once I got on the kick, uh, there was, this guy worked a, I think I caught one, maybe, maybe two on that. That is the old crawl, Bayou, Cajun crawl or Bayou crawl or something, Z-Man colors on their original Z-Man uh, chatterbaits. You can buy the skirt material that's very close to it with the, uh, I put a full Rage Menace. I think that's a full Rage Menace. You had to try it on a half ounce. Now, I think I did manage one, maybe two dinks on it. I think Char Charles caught probably like five to six fish to my one. Like the whole day. Until the very end. Then I finally got on. I was like, I'm just going to try like my confidence color B height delight. Because black and blue wasn't working. I did have my black and blue gold blade cheddar bait. That thing wasn't working. When black and blue is working, it's working. When it ain't, trust me, it ain't working. And it just wasn't working uh, yesterday. But this one got on I think I caught six eight maybe ten fish on that everything else was like one maybe two on a couple different baits and then a lot of baits nothing the last few times we've been out uh, I think the rattle trap bite where we're at was just like almost dead but then like these little dudes I didn't have none of I didn't have none of my ATVs to even try uh, yeah so don't forget your day box this little dude I didn't have him I could have tracked down some pink, uh, sorry, peanut butter and jelly TRDs, but I didn't have that little scar. I only have one of those. That just little bitty, like crazy finesse jig with a little TRD. I've caught a few on that, like when a bite's kind of tough. Did not have none of that stuff. It was all here in my day box. So far, that dude has been a letdown. I uh, 
have the other one in just a like watermelon. This is watermelon with this watermelon magic, which is very, very close to this. It's a watermelon base color, and this is a green pumpkin base color. Almost everything else is identical. Basically, just a purple and gold uh, metal flake glitter, right? This thing, I don't know if I've had a hit on it yet. When when this was working, in places where this works, I don't know what's going on with that. Things that make you go, hmm. So Charles's main bait, like I showed you, was that smaller one, peanut butter and jelly. But then he also got on a little tear with, uh, I should have one because I basically sold him that he never paid me for. My smaller, and there's that other one you were looking for, Charles. I bought these smaller ones. He's like, I want that, I need a smaller underspin for his little swim baits he was throwing. So Charles got on a little kick with, uh, and this one's cut down, but basically I think it was a little 3 or 3.3 3, uh, swim baits on an underspin. He, I think that was his second best bait. And that's just kind of what they were hitting. Did I switch to a swim bait? You know I didn't. I did switch to that, and I think, no, I don't even think I tried a swim bait. I was just like done for. It was so cold. My hands were cold. Like I said, I like Joe Montana. I was just out. Didn't have my... You know, day box, game on. My game box was gone. So I was just kind of like, oh, well, you had your day, Charles. You beat me. But like I said, I, and I was also into casting the stuff and into the wind. I did a lot of like what I've, you know, field tests on rods and reels, that kind of stuff. So anyway, any questions? Frank says he just got his Dark Sleeper P5. 302 ship from Japan. Yeah, was it that cheap? I uh, they had had some on uh, from uh, Digitaka. The uh, I think was it the I think the only one I could find on Digitaka was the blade, which I think is a little bit softer than these uh, Super Destroyer, and it's got a cork handle. And I almost bought it, and I still who knows. I'm going to get out and fish this thing. I'm either, I'm sure one of two things is going to happen since I spent, you know, when they cost that much money, you're either going to love them or hate them because if they're not like perfect filling and feel better than all the other cheaper rods, you're going to hate it that you spent that much money and didn't feel that good. So, so far, the Poison Adrenaline, love that rod. Gave 300 and whatever, 80 bucks at Roger Sporting Goods. Love the rod. Steve's Limited Reels, love the reels. Carbon Light 2.0s, for $120, the six nines are like yeah, 119, so 120 bucks. Love those rods. The seven foot medium moderate was like 130. Love that rod. They're a little chunky, bulky, filling, not as sensitive, but like for uh, you know a graphite that gives a feel of uh, glass, but is more sensitive than a fiberglass and not as heavy. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. They're definitely a the. In my opinion, anyway, the whole Carbon Light lineup is a moving bait uh, lineup to me. They're not going to be as sensitive as some rods, but if you know what you're getting and what you're wanting, they, I think they're very good rods. But I'm going to try to find rods that are a little lighter and crisper, but with the same hookup ratios and stuff like that. So, so far, Shading X, Shading X. Why did I say that? The uh, Poison Adrena awesome love the grip the feel all that destroyer actually as soon as i get off here with you guys i'm gonna go rig this thing up do a little cast testing outside just see what i think of it overall like cast wise how it loads on what a couple different baits maybe but you won't really know until you go out and start getting on a bite and catching fish or not catching fish or you know what it feels like bouncing jig off bottom throwing chatterbait you know you got to get out and put it through its paces before you can really say what you think the feel of it is and if you guys haven't watched the videos go check them out i've done got the feel of the poison adrena between that 110 plus one junior a couple different jigs chatter bait bite i've got on like a couple times spinner baits uh that rod's just awesome so anyway guys hopefully you liked it stay tuned uh i'm edit oh the video i'm editing right now it's actually from a few weeks back it was me and charles were out we were still on that uh bouncing uh rattle traps off the bottom and a jerk bait so that was one of the first times I, I think it was the first day i had the 
Jackal re-ranges, and then I bought the Six Sense uh, Duke, not the uh, Quake 70s or 80s. It was the Duke. That uh, so a few different catches on those baits, and what I, my overall thought I is on those. And I'll be honest, I think there might be a time and place, but I'm still sticking with my Booyah Hard Knocker. Then I'd have to put uh a toss up between the quake 70 or the lv 500 the lv 500 can't be beat when they're definitely bouncing something off the bottom but i feel right now once you start moving a rattle trap like you're swimming it through grass uh, on the edges of stuff and you're not just bouncing off the bottom i think the booyah passes it and the quake 70 may even be with it or ahead of it in my opinion the lv 500 isn't the greatest bait for throwing and reeling it back in I still say my Booyah Hard Knocker in the three quarter ounce is the best I've ever used. It gives you a feedback. You can feel the fish do hit it. Uh, you just have to be on rattle trap bites. Like everybody can go out there and you catch one here and there, but sometimes they just get on it. But I feel I can, I'm in tune with it better and it does work. It's got fish catching abilities over these other uh, rattle traps. I honestly put the Quake 70 probably there over the others I've tried. The Duke. I put with the LV500. If you're bouncing stuff off the bottom, I think that's when that Duke uh, from Six Cents will work. Otherwise, stick with their Quake 70s or whatever size. And they also make the Quake in a suspending. You guys comment if you've even tried those. I've seen them. I may get those. They would definitely suck for bouncing because you're not going to be able to bounce them off the bottom like we do with the uh, all these others I've talked about. So I'm still a Booyah Hard Knocker there. There's not one of those baits. That especially for the money, you can get a couple different Booyah hard knockers before you get the, on some of these other ones. So I don't even think I'm gonna, tr even though I love the Poison Adrena, I don't even know if I'm gonna buy the uh, Jackal TN 70s or 80s or whatever. They've got the 80s up at Rogers. If they had a 70, I may just buy one, but the color I wanted was in at uh, Tackle Warehouse and then it went back out of stock. So I'm just gonna wait. I think I'm just gonna stick with my Booyah hard knockers. Toledo Gold, that one I call Zombie, the white, and then maybe another. I may get try one or two more colors in three-quarter ounce. I don't think I'm going to buy any more half ounce until I lose the ones. I already have them in half ounce, and I think I have I think I think have two whites or one white, and then the Toledo Gold, and then a couple other colors, and the old original Excaliburs, and then I've got several Strike King half ounce, so I don't need any more half ounce rattle traps. Don't need any more chatterbaits either. You guys see me buying chatterbaits, any even the mini maxes. I don't need any more. I've got the one. Uh, thought about getting a thunder cricket, that crazy white, off white, almost yellowish color looking one, because it reminds me of what crappies start looking like. If you guys remember that uh, when we were fishing with that trailer, I pulled out. It was stuck by the green stuff, so it gave it a like lightish yellow chartreusey glow. Got on a crazy little bite there for a while with that bait. Anyway. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Get out. Go bass and bonsai. Do whatever you do. Have fun doing it. I'm gone.